born in the 70s in yeah, the southern Lebanon. But my birth was in Naba, in Beirut. western or northern. After the Lebanese Civil War, we moved to uh, western Beirut. In 1977, uh, yes, in 1977, my mother placed me and my brother at an orphanage. It was a small building, the orphans were like a few tens, not more than that. After that phase, I moved to a private school, and from that point I started springing art, because at 1983 there was a drawing contest, I took the first prize, then I traveled uh, to France. When I came back, this matter stayed in my head, and I became even more encouraged. After my graduation from the secondary uh, phase, I had been a vocational artist. And I entered the Art Institute and graduated in 1995. This is the academic educational phase, but the matter of drawing, as you know, well, you know after the painter graduates from college, he has to start developing and establishing himself. So I consider this period of time that I spent at the Art Institute is an experimental stage. And in order to develop my skills, I stayed alone at an atelier and engendered my own style. I put much effort in order to become this new drawing, the criteria, and I started. The civil war in Lebanon, for some people, might have been a negative impact. For example, a person who has lived as an orphan and spent his life at an orphanage. Considering also the financial situation that was a bit on the edge, this can cause despair for a person, but I had a goal. I wanted to become a, pair, a painter. In order to become a painter, you have to learn. And this is why I didn't really take the fatherlessness and frustration in. Vice versa, I used to stay uh, if I wanted to get there. And uh, I have to stay optimistic and I have to stay very happy. I did not have uh, any obstacle because the target was there. Uh, besides, when a person places his goals in front of his eyes, he does not ask about obstacles or difficulties. Today, when I rewind those issues, I find them hard. I ask myself, I did that? But yes, thanks God. God has attained me what I wanted. I depend mostly on the color. I prefer the feature, the color, uh, the most in my drawing. And on the other hand, I consider the calligraphy at another phase. And I started by just drawing lines through inking, uh, such as Chinese inking, perhaps tracing a name with inking. I found that it started to receive acknowledgement and it had some audience. I moved from this to the brush. I transferred from the pencil to the brush on a board. I enlarged that. I do admire drawing and calligraphy, but when I started with calligraphy in 2002, I used to draw abstractively. The handwriting was abstract for a certain type of people, but at the end, not all people are able to handle uh, Quranic material. When you say Quranic material and you want to place it in a casual house, such as for Muslims, they will read uh, what I have written from the Quran. Sometimes you meet, for example, a secular person, a secular poet. He might prefer Arabic handwriting or an Islamic one, but he does not desire to be read. Yet he might take it. However, a person who reads Quran wants something artistic, drawn and read. For the past two years, and uh, until now, I have started to prevail words written by calligraphy in general. When it comes to drawing, I drew three separate phases. I started with surrealism, a little part of it was abstract, and today I draw expressively. Expressive drawing is a bit close to impressionism, no, no, nothing more, nothing less. But then you stare at the painting in all of its styles and diversities, you can still tell who is drawing this. 
Self development depends on the person himself. He is the one who is supposed to have the adequate reading of the environment he is presented in. And uh, this person is usually called, uh, well, not among these people, but God wills uh, will be like them. Um, some people raise their era. How do they do that? The one who is all of his society and his origin as well, he knows what's after this era. So for a person to develop his, develop his era, he must review his environment, the society around him, and must also have a reading outside those two. He must read outside himself as well. He must not be enclosed. So he must take what is there in, in others' experiences in order to benefit from it. That's not wrong to develop from others' experiences for the sake of yourself uh, development. Um, however, if I decided to isolate myself and say, uh, I draw or nobody does or that this drawing that I drew or this art is only art present I won't develop I did an artistic piece that I want to present in a piazza they will be astonished uh, for example for seeing an Islamic artist who has reached his goals he reached his goals this means that any person is able to get there, even if it were from another perspective, another gateway. And But he keeps uh, his Islamic identity. He must not concede them. The Islamic art. What is the Islamic art? Is it Muhammadi art? There are several namings. Um, is it Muhammadi art, Arabic art? What is it then? There is still no definite identity that defines the Islamic art. They haven't given uh, us yet the unified naming for the Islamic art. Besides, who invented the Islamic art? That's the question. Who has stated the name or the texture of for the Islamic art? Those queries made me review again and search again for something that helps me give people give people the main idea of this theme. This is when I wrote a book called Art and its Influence in the Islamic Society. I took art, the definition of art, how art affected the society, and what did we take from art. So I preferred to give the candid picture of our Islamic society's accomplishment in the field of art. Who invented the Islamic art? What did this field influence in our Islamic society? Uh, I stayed in the field of drawing, uh, and drawing and calligraphy. This book, if God wills, uh, when when I'm through with it, um, but I'm waiting for the right conditions for me to publish it. Our duty, no matter what happens, is to display the authentic picture of art. It is not wrong. We do not have a real school of art that is specified for us Muslims. The Islamic art. Is absent. Is absent. We do not have it. Like the classical Impressionism school, we do not have it. But we take this identity uh, from the social identity and product. It is in, uh, it's in an aesthetic way and we present it. But we do not imitate the Westerners uh, in what it wants. No, we make benefit of Westerns uh, in the areas that we want. The smart Westerners in the past took from the Arabs. Uh, we were left behind and they have reached what they have reached. They took from the Arab sciences, medicines and so on. It had been all for Arabs. Today, we learn how to take from the Western art. That's not wrong, but we should establish our own identity. This is a painting for a Lebanese person, a Muslim. Do you see it? A Muslim, and then we take the rest. It is not wrong to say a Lebanese Eastern. Uh, did this painting or this book, uh, he did not concede his identity. If I did not preserve my Arabic or Islamic identity, 
No, I shall fail. You might be able to sell pictures. I'm not refusing that, and sometimes at very high rates. Uh, but how long does this last? It is by how a human being survives and how long he does. Uh, this is it. If this is not present, a human being is the man. Imam Ali is the prince of speech. When you speak about Imam Ali, he is the teacher of all the Amma, peace be upon them. All of the Amma, he is their teacher. But why? What's, what's this characteristics? You could see how he lived his life, how he dealt with people, how his attitude when dealing with his enemies was even uh, with his beloved ones. Imam Ali, peace be upon him, even for those who loved him, what did he repeat on them? My issues and yours are not one for that, I want you for God and you want me for yourselves. Why didn't Imam Ali concede his identity? For his relationship with God had been very strong. And when this condition was present, he did not consider creatures. How did he conceive all of those people? By knowing there is Allah. When you see Allah, you do not look at all of these people, whether they clapped or not, whether they followed you or not, uh, whether they have supported you or not. You just look at God. And this is the only simple part of Imam Ali's life. He was brave and even when it comes to Dahj al in the field or uh, the one who gathered Imam Singh, which is Sharif al-Radi, are these enough? Imam Ali has treasures about sciences, not only speech, uh, treasures about life sciences, nature and even politics that were not mentioned. Sharif Radi was only able to aggregate the speeches of eloquence and place them in a book. But there are quotes for the Imam in regard of ideology, sciences, life and many other aspects that still have not reached us. All of these treasures are present and the parts left have not been received. Can you imagine the situation if they have all been handed to us? This is the characteristic of Imam Ali that really influences us. Imam Ali has a beautiful quote in which he says, I knew that the sustenance is within Allah's hand, so I have left off my hand of people and I knew that life and death is within Allah's hands. So I repose and I knew that heaven and hell is within Allah's hands, so I rested. Those are the most important things in life. If those are in Allah's hands, then what's there left to fear? And one's self who trusts in Allah, then Allah is his computant. Then let's trust in Allah. Imam Ali mentioned how Prophet Muhammad had taught him a thousand doors of knowledge. Uh, each door opens uh, for me another thousand doors. This is what made Imam Ali uh, overcome all of his peers and companions at that time, all the scientists of that time. His modesty is not found within any other person. He is known between people for his modesty, his wisdom, his stories with his brothers as the manager of the House of Funds for the Muslims. He used to distribute the money for all Muslims when his brother is, he is well known for that story. When he asked him for more money since he was his brother, so Imam Ali replied, do you moan from a fire uh, heated by its owner and you do not moan from a fire inflamed by its creator? This is also a constitution for our society. Sometimes the other party would tell you, what is life? We live, we perish, but that's it. But Imam Ali, do you figure that you are a small mass and within you the greater world has been involved? So how would a person not love Imam Ali? On what foundations? No, after all the poet, uh, the Bulis Salami recites, O the sky witness and O the earth confess and reveal, I have mentioned Ali. 
This is a Christian poet and many other incidents that we mention from as Dirar with Muawiyah when he asked Dirar to describe for him the prince of believers and Dirar replied, do you guarantee my neck would not be cut off? So Muawiyah granted him that. He said, I do not copy the story literally, well, but the selections from it are as it goes. Yes, by the name of Allah, he had been long in foreseeking, very strong, but justiceness speaks knowledge. He was amongst us, like one of us, and in this meaning, he continues to reach. And I have seen him at night crying like an afflicted boy, like a little boy. And he cries as he says, O dunya, tempt me, temptate someone else. I have divorced you three times, no return from them. For your living is despicable and your term is short. Oh, from the adversity and prop, the length of traveling and the farness of the course. So this is Imam Ali. The people who really knew Imam Ali, who really knew the Prince of Believers, who would ever look at some another? So of course I'm really influenced by Imam Ali and let me tell you the reason. Uh, the, Israeli, the Israelis have occupied southern Lebanon during the 80s. I was not able to leave the house but by that time there had been something called the Iron Fist. I used to sleep at my brother's house and during the summer uh, there had been no television, we can't get outside the house, um, so we can't go out. So my brother and I, we, so my brother and I, we used to compete who would memorize Imam Ali's speeches of eloquence, each speech on its own. Imagine that. He and I would fight who has memorized more. And within three months of summer, we have memorized a whole bunch of it. So we lived in that atmosphere, and we have seen Imam Ali. Um, later on, I expanded in his quotes that are not present in Nahj al -Balara. I found richer quotes, way richer quotes. So I asked by them, where is Imam Ali's inside? Uh, all of this. So I hope we are on the steps of the Prince of Believers. We invite all the youth of course, to be creative. And the one who owns creativity shall not despair. If you do not love the subject you are living or dealing with, you cannot be creative at it. There is no creativity. Anything that you want to work at, develop by it, or be creative at, uh, if you haven't loved it, you won't be able to give any. So because I love drawing, whether I sell my paintings or not, I want to draw. I had a fair I hadn't, I want to draw. There's a war or not, I want to draw. Because I love drawing. I have granted it much time um, until I was able to reach a state that allows me not to freeze. Sometimes the human being enters a field that makes him freeze after he leaves university or until he dies. You find him drawing in the same rhythm, the same style and movement. I do not. I have a fair. The following year, the fair is completely different. The drawings are of a different attitude from their predecessors. There is nothing so called uh, as stagnancy. When you are stagnant, you perish. Um, you have to always learn and always say, I still don't know anything. As you increase your knowledge, you say, I still haven't known anything. This is recited by Al Mutanabbi. He says that if you want to be a poet, you have to memorize a thousand lines of poetry. Then you have to forget them all. After you do that, you start all over again. We must draw a thousand drawings. I want to consider that I haven't drawn any painting and start over again. A thousand, two, three, and maybe ten thousand as well. I will still repeat I do not know anything. Just as I say I'm a painter and ego hits me, the, the painter is terminated. Adding to that, 
There is a speech by the messenger, peace be upon him, that is religious, but we are able to expand it to all our movements, the social, the practical, economic, and political. We, he was passing in a desert, the sun was very hot, the area was desolated. He asked his peers to gather for him firewood. His friend wondered where to get the wood from in a desert. He asked them to wander and since they were hundreds, each handed a small piece of wood. And uh, when they were gathered, they had an ample mountain. He told them that little sins are gathered to become great. This is a model. Today, in our society, if every youngster held by a coin or two, maybe three or four, they would expand until they are able to open a project. Eventually, the artistic work is for the sake of approaching Allah. If Allah has a stake in selling these paintings, they will be sold. And uh, if Allah has a say in selling these paintings, they will be sold. If he has no say, it might be placed in charities for the orphanage. Nothing is wasted. Maybe in your life you might not be paid. Okay? But maybe at this age people are not going to accept maybe after a few generations people are able to accept that there is this painter so we must not be frustrated we must trust in god and work and be creative at our work there is a difference at this point and by trust in god uh, if we weren't so, we won't be able to reach any of our goals. I really do hope from the young people who are really competing that they should uh, compete in artistic sciences. They must do it at their knowledge and at their universities. Compete and help each other. For Imam Ali says, make the favor for those who are worthy of it and for those who are not. For if you do it, then you are worthy of it. The favor does not require individuality. Those who have the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and al aimma are frustrated? No. This is what I wish for all the youth, if God wills. We should benefit from our leaders. They must benefit from them as an experience, a story, and a moral of life. We should always look at God. As long as he is ahead of us, we should stay humble. And if God wills, he will, we will reach our targets and attain the most beautiful creativity in the world.